This this is way how a man shows you he's he's actually showing you respect when he all right, let's talk about those five ways a guy is going to show that he respects you. You know, it's interesting because this morning I did a, a video, uh, a short video about how um, women, how men, excuse me, what was it about? Um, what a woman can do, what a man thinks is respectful from a woman. So I thought I'd do the reverse here today. So if you did happen to catch that, I, I wanted to say I'm covering both ends of the spectrum being the men and women. And lately, I've been really fascinated with the idea, particularly in the dating process, I've been fascinated with the idea of around respect. And what I mean to say, it seems to me, seems to me lately that there's a lack of respect by both genders in the dating process. I'm repeat there. There's a lack of respect from both genders from the dating process, from certainly things like ghosting and, and not returning a phone call to taking a long time to respond, just to give you a few examples. But, and, 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 you know, it's interesting swiping on someone and then never reaching out to them. I'm using mostly uh, talking about dating apps. And certainly when someone writes you a beautiful letter and not acknowledging it, and I not to suggest that you have to do that all the time, but I certainly believe that there's a level of respect in the beginning stages that I think translates to the, to the, we'll talk about the pre-dating and then the dating period. And I think because there's a lack of respect in the pre-dating, that it does bleed over into the dating process. And I believe that is partly because human beings operate rather selfishly in the dating process. I repeat that, I believe human beings operate selfishly. Now, I think part of the reason is that for the most part, when you're meeting a total stranger and you know nothing about them, you don't know their background, you don't know their history, you don't know their friends, you know so little about them. And these days in the dating realm, most of the time, not always, but most of the time we're meeting total strangers. And so because of that, folks tend to focus more on their own needs instead of the needs of the other person. And that just makes sense, right? Um, you know, and, and think about this, even, even Dr. Uh, uh, the Gottmans, who um, I talk about frequently in my video, and if you haven't checked out the Gottman Institute, I highly recommend checking out their website because there's a plethora of information to help couples really bond together and such. That's their, their area of expertise. But I read something uh, some years back talking about the three phases of love is we start from the phase of I need my needs met. I need my needs met. So what are the needs that, you know, for example, men need? They operate from the premise, I want sex, as an example. Now, I'm going to use an example from a woman's perspective. I need a man to pay for the date. OK, um, and, and that's not coming from a, either one of those isn't coming from it's, it's not coming from the other person's point of view. It's coming from your own individual uh, point of view. So can you see why the dating process right from the get go can right from the get go can be a little bit disrespectful if you're operating from your own needs? Now, certainly you're not going to uh, operate from a place of, you know, think about it operating from a place of giving to another who hasn't given to you. And I, I don't, you know, giving love to someone you don't know yet, that makes sense. And certainly the early stages of dating is kind of a feeling out period of one another. But there's also this lack of respect that I've noticed, certainly in the area of communication, in the area of communication. There almost seems like a disrespect. And this is just my point of view here from what I've observed. And believe me, I've talked to thousands of women in the dating realm. And I can tell you that I've seen a lot of disrespect from men, from what I've heard from my clients. Now I can tell you as a man out there who's single looking for love, I felt disrespected by women. So can you see why it's a dysfunctional dating process today? In fact, I, I, I continually say this, I, I say this with real sadness that it's a rather shit show out there. Part of it is because these devices, and I want everyone to think about this for a moment. You know, I was reading, I was watching a video with two evolutionary biologists um, talking, and this had nothing to do with dating, but they were talking particularly of the effects of technology in our world and how, think about it, literally elect, 
you know, if, 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 if human beings, I don't know how long they've been on the planet, whether it's 200,000 years, but certainly civilized human beings, we go back 10,000 years. So if 10,000 years, do you realize that electricity was invented only 100 years ago? So there were none of these things. There wasn't even this way for me to communicate with you. So we are in brand new territory because of technology, and in particular, the technology uh, surrounding the dating realm, this online dating process. And think about it. Think about this for a moment. If right now in history, we didn't have online dating, during the pandemic, in fact, how were people going to meet? How were people going to connect? They weren't going out to work. They were stuck at home. Many, many people were not all, but they weren't meeting in their work environment. They weren't even socializing. So we only had this um, medium to meet people. And why I'm saying the challenge with this is that, and I'm going to get to the point of gaining respect in a moment, but I think this is a really important point is that you know, most people, and, I, and I, I said earlier, this has to do with communication. Most humans weren't designed to communicate via our phones. And what I mean particularly with our thumbs, that's not a real, um, very few of us were trained at communicating with our thumbs. And what I mean to say is we don't necessarily, what's here doesn't come out in our thumbs because it's oftentimes short you know, bursts of conversations. You know, text message was really designed like, hey, I'm running five minutes late, or what's your address to your house? It wasn't for true communication. And furthermore, think about this. If communication is 90% nonverbal, I mean, it's, 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 it's in three dimensions. As you're seeing hands moving, you can, you can see the facial gestures, and, and more importantly, you can get their pheromones involved. This is where a lot of communication is missed and, and there's a lot of struggle going on. And this is where a lot of the disconnect happens in particular with a level of respect because most humans haven't really been prepared for this much technology. And I gotta share something with you all. My uh, computer crashed yesterday and I went into an absolute panic attack. I mean, literally, I was shaking so much that I called my son. There's a picture of Colin. I said, Colin, please meet me at the store. I got to buy a new computer because I got to shoot a video today. And I was in such terror because I'm, a, I'm in that baby boom Gen X period where we didn't, weren't raised with technology. I mean, I was sharing with my son. I grew up when there was originally black and white television. And it was a big deal when we got our first calculator when I was growing up. I mean, let me tell you something. That was a big deal in the house. A calculator. Now they give them away at grocery stores. And I'm, I'm bringing this up is because humans weren't designed. We weren't prepared. That was certainly we are designed for it. That's not fair to say. But we, I don't believe we were prepared for this much infusion of technology in our lives. And when somebody said that computers were user friendly, I can tell you, I was trying to figure out the, uh, the lighting on my keyboard with this new computer and it took me an hour just to figure out how to do it. And this was after doing research. All right, so you're probably going, Jonathan, what about the topic? Listen, I think this is important to understand that a lot of disrespect is usually centered around the inability to communicate effectively with our thumbs, number one. I also believe that the vast majority of human beings have terrible relationship skills and emotional maturity skills. If you're not familiar with my emotional maturity chart, I show it pretty frequently, but I believe roughly you know, 60% of the population has dysfunctional relationship skills. And what that really means is that ability to really to really communicate effectively with another human being. And this is certainly true in the workplace as well. There are a lot of people that don't like each other that work together because they have poor communication skills. So what does this have to do with this topic? How does a man gain your respect? Well, I think how a person shows up in the early stages of the dating process gives you an indication if they're actually capable of leaning into a healthy, happy relationship. Not leaning back, but leaning into a healthy, happy relationship. So we're going to talk about those five ways a guy is going to show gain. What is the topic again? Five things men do to gain your respect. 
having a little brain fart right now. So here's my notes. Da, da, da. So let's talk about it right now. Um, one thing I do want to say, though, uh, in the Gottman's work, and I, by the way, I talk about this book fre frequently, The Eight Dates by Drs. John and Julie Gottman. And why I bring this up is this is a great book to help you understand the mechanics to a healthy, happy relationship. And this actually creates eight separate conversations that are critical to determining if you're a good fit with one another. And the beauty of this book, it actually is a great basis for developing emotional uh, or developing intimacy, which eventually leads to emotional safety. And think about respect. Feeling respected and feeling trust in a relationship makes you feel safe, feeling respected, feeling trust. And trust is all about, I want you everyone to think about this. This isn't about fidelity. This isn't about trusting that your partner won't sleep with someone else. Real trust is the person cares about your feelings as much as you care about your feelings. The person cares about your feelings as much as you care about your feelings. You know, it fascinates me, and I've mentioned this before. I'm doing another squirrel here for a moment. I'll get to the topic in a second, so give me a second. But you know what's fascinating to me? People will have sex with one another, but sometimes, I mean, they may not know the person's last name. Those are usually those hookup situations. But you might not even know the person's birth date. You might not know the person's favorite color. You might not know their two closest friends. You might not know where they grew up where they went to high school. There's so many things you don't know about a person, and yet the penis will get to go inside the vagina with little or no you know, real awareness of who this other, this person is. Isn't that fascinating? I mean, it didn't used to be that. I mean, I'll tell you, when I was single growing up, I mean, we had to jump through a lot of hoops before we got laid. Well, th this was if we didn't meet someone at a bar, because if you met someone at a bar, alcohol had a way of breaking down all kinds of bear, uh, boundaries. And I'm not recommending that. I'm just saying, you know, used to be that's where we met people. That's when I was growing up. We'd go dancing, we'd go to bars because that's where you met people. Now we can meet people online. And the beauty of meeting people online is we can actually pre-qualify our prospect if we choose to learn the skills to ask better questions in the early stages to determine, does this person share my values? Is this person's lifestyle blendable with mine? And lastly, does this person, you know, maybe you can ask enough questions where you can determine, is this person even emotionally mature enough to be in a relationship? All right, I've gone through my little rhetoric. Now I'm gonna to get to those five things. I know you're waiting. So. And I see that the, the chat box is, is, is rolling right now. So number one, um, number one, he listens and acknowledges your point of view. He listens and acknowledges your point of view. And more importantly, he listens and acknowledges your feelings. One of the fundamentals of good relationship skills that actually help couples last the, go the distance is that ability to listen to the other person's point of view and actually acknowledge and accept that person's point of view as being true for them. Conflict resolution skills is one of the weakest skills for most couples. And it's actually one of the primary reasons why they end up breaking up is because they have poor communication skills when they get into conflict. And usually most people when they're in conflict is, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right. And there's not finding that common ground. They're not finding that common ground. And so it's really incumbent upon people, at least my recommendation, is to learn better communication skills. This is why I continually recommend the book, Nonviolent Communication by Marshall Rosenberg. Nonviolent communication. By the way, this should have been titled Compassionate Communication. By the way, there's a link below to all the Jonathan recommends books in the, in the, uh, the description there. Okay. And in addition, this is a new book I'm just starting to read and I'm loving it. It's called I Hear You the surprisingly simple skills behind extraordinary relationship. And this gives you great examples of how to just tweak your communication just a little bit so you can actually feel seen, heard, and understood. And remember when I said earlier, you know, most people operate from the premise of getting their own needs met. I have a theory in dating today 
usually two people show up in their egoic self trying to be seen, heard, and understood, and they're mostly vomiting on the other person instead of actually engaging with them in healthy communication. They're oftentimes just spouting their resume versus really engaging with another person. So healthy communication skills, listening and acknowledging the person's other point of view. Number two, this, this is way, how a man shows you, he's, he's actually showing you respect when he, express, he expresses gratitude for your efforts towards him. He expresses gratitude for your efforts towards him. And what I mean to say is when you do something kind, he's actually acknowledging it, not from a passive thank you perspective. I, by the way, I want everyone to really adopt these three words in their lexicon. And that is the word of gratitude, actually more than three words, but gratitude, uh, grateful and appreciation. Gratitude, grateful and appreciation. I know gratitude and grateful are, are kind of the same, but they're, they're still just variations of the same word. I believe it's a lot better to use the word, I really appreciate that you took me out to this really nice restaurant versus thank you for taking me out in the restaurant. It has more power. The word appreciation has a lot of power. The word gratitude, I'm really grateful that you were kind. And by the way, men, this is what men should be doing. So I'm, I'm, I'm giving you the reverse here. Um, but it, it doesn't matter whatever. It's like, hey, I really appreciate when a guy says, I appreciate, I'm grateful. I'm, you know, it says the word gratitude that you, tr you made dinner for me the other night. That's a heck of a lot more powerful than just thank you. Okay, number three, number three. He apologizes in a healthy way. He apologizes in a healthy way. We are all going to have disagreements, and there are always going to be times that men do some bonehead moves. I, I have to tell you, I've said some bonehead things right from the get-go. I know a lot of you put me up on a pedestal. I am not as evolved as you think I am. Um, I'll show you the coffee mug in a second. I've said bonehead moves and apologizing in a healthy way looks like this. It represents the four R's, the four R's, and that is to, or actually there's technically five R's, but there's four of these, is to recognize what was done wrong or what might have been said wrong, number one, to recognize it. Number two, to have either regret or remorse for what happened, regret or remorse. Number three, you take responsibility. Take responsibility for your actions. And lastly, you offer some remedy so it doesn't happen again. Recognize regret and remorse, responsibility and remedy. When a guy actually apologizes in a healthy way, that is because he's trying to gain your respect. He's trying to show you he is a genuine, trustworthy guy. And yet, sadly, and this is sad, most human beings, they're, they're liberal of apologies. Oh, I'm sorry that happened. I'm sorry that happened. I'm sorry that happened. That's, like, that's not an apology. Apologies, taking ownership, having a little bit of remorse, you know? You know, you know trying to come up with a remedy, taking responsibility, that is a genuine and sincere apology. And number four, he compliments your accomplishments. He compliments your accomplishments. Wait, you know, it's funny. Um, I was with a friend the other day and she told me something that happened in her life. And now at the moment, it escapes me. Of course, I'm on camera now and it totally escapes me. And of this friend, I just, I was so happy for her accomplishment that I complimented her. You know, that's a great sign. Someone is into you that they're trying to gain your respect when they, they acknowledge and compliment your efforts, your efforts in your life, okay, your accomplishments, okay? So it's, this is a little bit different than expressing gratitude for your efforts. This is more about complimenting you and, and being your cheerleader. And when a man is a genuine cheerleader and go, oh, that's nice, oh, that's nice, oh, that's nice. You know, today's conversations are so fucking superficial. Did you have a good day? I hope you had a good day. Hey, have a good day. Did you have a blessed day? That's like the rhetoric today. I'm talking about encouraging people to go deeper than the surface. And lastly, and most importantly, number five, is he is transparent about his relationship desires. 
He is transparent about his relationship desires. And I'm going to show everybody my example so you can get an idea of what this looks like. But my real, and by the way, I was just talking to another uh, uh, male friend last night. We were having this whole debate about how he, he's actually over, I mean, women are shocked because he literally leads with this is what I want in a relationship. And this is what a relationship looks like. I'm like, are you listening from my playbook? He, I, I loved it. And this was someone I'd never spoken to before. I know I said friend, but more like a social acquaintance. And I was like, I was like fascinated. And I'm like, me too, the same thing. So let me just share with you, just to give you an example, what transparency looks like in the way of a relationship. And I say this frequently, so you all, most of my regulars know this rhetoric. I'm looking for a relationship where we spend three or four days and nights a week together, doing shared activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork building skills, both in our personal and professional life, intimacy, both physical and emotional intimacy that leads to either moving in together or getting married. That's my desire. Is it gonna look like that? I don't know, it's not an absolute, but at least I have a clear understanding and I articulate that. That's what transparency looks like. And given that this is the most important factor in a relationship is being transparent with another, I'm also a big proponent of being vulnerable and authentic with someone, vulnerable, authentic, and transparent, the that, as I call it. When a man is transparent about his relationship desires, he's treating you with a level of respect. And my hope is that you're actually experiencing these kind of men. Now, I know it's frustrating out there. So let me just say, if you need some support in this area, then check out the link to a free discovery call with me because my area of expertise is teaching you how to vet for those emotionally available men and teaching you how to ask the right questions based on your individual personality. So I can help you avoid the looky loos out there, and there's a lot of looky loos out there, and those men, and there are plenty of men who are seeking a serious relationship. I had a friend show me her her hinge profile today, and I was reading the guy's profile, and I mean, either he's full of shit, or I mean, and I'm, I don't believe he is because I I, I really looked at it and I'm like, wow, this is a sincere man, and there are a lot of sincere men who are thirsty for a serious committed relationship, we have to throw out, look at, I, I don't wanna throw out the baby with the bathwater because let's face it, I, I said 60% of people are dysfunctional. I didn't include those 20% who have clinical issues in their lives. So yes, there's gonna be a lot of people that aren't a good fit for you. And at the same time, when you show up, just like what I just shared here today, everything goes both ways. When you show up that way, you actually, will become more of a magnetic attractor for what you want. Does that resonate with you? Give me a thumbs up, give me an amen, okay? All right, this will be a great place to wrap up today. I hope you found value in what I shared. If you did, please post a comment below on anything you wanna add. I do my best to read them all. Please like this video right now. Please share it with some friends so more people can find me. And if you wanna talk to me, if you wanna schedule a discovery call with me, check out the link below. Check out my podcast, follow me on Instagram, check out all the books I recommend. And if you can't afford coaching, check out my group called Midlife Love Mastery. The link is below. All right, I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, giving myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Bear hug of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. I want to thank 